Next on Viewpoint, what do we really know about the end of the world? The terrible things in the tribulation that are going to be taking place, Bob, is a part of the judgment for sin. The rapture, Israel, and the Antichrist. Our guest Bill Harris helps us sort it all out. This is a program that discusses issues of faith for people looking for answers. This is Viewpoint with Bob Placey. About every few years, some well-meaning Christian declares the rapture is going to happen, the end times are here, but so far they've been wrong. What are the signs of the times? Well, Bill Harris is a former TV journalist. He's had several ministries on focusing on the end times, and he's here today to shed some light on that topic for us. Bill, glad to have you with us. Good to be here with you, Bob. Oh, it's good. Uh, the end times. We, we, I mean, there's people out there watching saying, well, I have no idea what the rapture is other than when you have rapture, it's just really exciting. <laughs> but uh, describe the term for me. Well, the term was taken from a Latin word, herapio, which means a snatching away. Mm -hmm. And what it relates to, Bob, is actually the Christians are being evacuated from the earth to go be with the Lord. And, and to put it in simple terms, the coming of the Lord is in two phases with a seven year period of tribulation. So he's, between. he's I mean, because mm -hmm. he said when 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 Christ left, they said the angel said, you, you, you stand here watching this guy go away, but he's going to come back again. Yes. Right? So we're expecting the Lord yes. Jesus Christ to come back. Mm -hmm. And they said he's coming back in the same manner. And he left in the clouds. And when he comes back, the first mm -hmm. phase, which is called the rapture, he'll be coming in the clouds. He won't actually set foot on the earth. He comes in the clouds and we we go up to meet him. The second phase, of course, is when he actually comes down to earth and rules the world for a thousand years. So how do we know that hasn't already happened? <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. We just haven't been left here. <laughs> good, good question. But actually, we would know if it had actually happened because his physical presence um, of, of being here would have been made known. Right. In the rapture, let's, let's keep this in mind that when God first created man, body, soul, and spirit, he was meant to live forever. Uh -huh. Death brought about the separation. Death always brings separation. And, and death so came because? Of sin, the sin of Adam and God Eve. God meant for us to live forever. Yes, yes. The, and, and, and the world scoffs at us and says, well, you know, God said he was going to die when he ate the fruit. He didn't die. Well, yeah, he died some 930 he, years or so later death, death physically. Was introduced and he, yeah. mm -hmm. But spiritually, here's the point. Spiritually, he died immediately because there was a separation between him and God. Uh -huh. He ran, she ran at Eve. And they hid themselves from God. There's the beginning of the separation. But in terms of their, their, their makeup as an entity, human entity, um, a, a, upon death, there's a separation as well. The body goes back to the grave, mm -hmm. uh, the dust from which it came. Yeah, right. The body and the soul has to go to a place to give an account until the Lord returns. If you're a born again Christian, that body, or rather that soul and spirit goes to be in a place called paradise, which is a part of heaven. And then at the rapture, God brings them back. Yeah, because Christ said on the cross, I remember this in the, from the Bible, it says mm -hmm. he talks to the thief on the cross and who, who identifies as, him, as, as Jesus yes. and, 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 and the Lord. And he says, today you'll be with me in paradise. In paradise yeah. Yeah. And that's, again, that's, that's a portion of heaven where God receives Christians until the coming of the Lord. That, but there is a judgment. But there is a judgment. Yeah. But the judgment for the Christians, Bob, is not judgment for sin because we have accepted Christ and mm -hmm. we are blood washed. We cross the bloodline. So when we come in there, it's as if we'd never sinned. That's right, because we have what's called imputed righteousness, or that word means implanted. The Lord has implanted his righteousness in us. We can't do it on our mm -hmm. own righteousness. We'd never make it. So we have his righteousness. So with the soul and the spirit being in heaven to be with the Lord and the body in the grave, when the rapture occurs, it's interesting in that scripture in 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4, it says that, you know, the bodies of the grave, and it says that God will also bring you back with him. And it seems like a conflict. Well, how's God going to bring you back from heaven if you're coming up out yeah. of the grave? Well, it's the body that is being resurrected, and he's bringing the soul and the spirit back with him. the dead in Christ boom. shall rise. Yes. And when they, and, and they come back together. <laughs> I like that boom. <laughs> it happens in a moment in a twinkling yeah. of an eye. Now, you bat your, your eye 11 one hundredths of a second. Mm -hmm. Do you know, Bob, that faster than that, the Lord will have come, will have come for Christians and be gone. Yeah. So people can't say, well, when it happens, I'm going to just bow down and ask for forgiveness mm -hmm. at the last minute. No, you won't even know it happened. You won't even know it took place. Now, we also hear something in the end times. We hear about the apocalypse. We hear about about all kinds of nasty things happening. People are, yeah. as a matter of fact, there's people out there who are afraid to read the book of Revelation. Yeah, yeah. Only because they don't have hope. And when they read that book, it just sounds so horrible. Yeah, yeah. Where are we with that in the end well, times? Well, we've got to consider this about 
sin, and some people don't like you to talk about sin, but yeah, sin it makes is us uncomfortable. A, it's a very <laughs> terrible thing. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not that God is a mean, nasty God and he wants to hurt people. Mm -hmm. He sent his son because of the fact that he wants to save us and preserve us for himself. Mm -hmm. And when the judgment comes, and the judgment has to come, God is a, he's a God of justice, and there has to be justice paid for the sins of humanity. Mm -hmm. This is why Christ came. When people say, well, you know, you want to condemn me, and I say, no, no. It, it isn't condemnation. The world is already condemned. This is why Christ had to come, because the world was already world condemned. Consent. And when we accept Christ, now there is no more condemnation to those who accept Jesus Christ. So the terrible things in the tribulation that are going to be taking place, Bob, is a part of the judgment for sin. But God doesn't want us to be a part of that. Remember the one scripture where he says, it is not God's will that any man should perish. Should perish. But we hear things like uh, the mark of the beast mm -hmm. and some things we're supposed to be cautious about. and things yeah. like that. Tell, tell us about that. Because well, uh, we're talking to people right now that have heard these terms and yeah. have no idea what they really yeah. mean spiritually. Well, the, the, the beast is, is talking about the Antichrist, and just mm -hmm. the very name tells you his position. Right. Mm -hmm. he, will be the, he will be in control of the world and the three major facets of your life. He will control the politi political affairs of your life, the econom economic affairs of your life, and the spiritual and affairs. And this is a physical person. This is a physical, physical person. person. The political aspect will be that you have to identify with him with a mark, as you said, the mm -hmm. mark of the beast, which is going to be either in your forehead or on your hand, mm -hmm. some kind of way. The technology, I understand, is in place for that to even happen now. Yeah. He controls the economics of our lives in that we will not be able to buy or sell or enter commerce in any kind of way unless we have, have that, that mark. mark. So it's like, it's like having a card that you're going to scan, but it's a mark Something in your like, body. Yeah. And you Somehow, can't buy somewhere. yourself. Yeah. And the third thing he controls, of course, is the religious or spiritual aspects of your life. And the spiritual aspects are being turned over to his right-hand man, who is called the false prophet. And is the false prophet who's like the, the PR man for the Antichrist, <laughs> so to speak, because he promotes everything pointing toward the Antichrist. But for those religious affairs, you must bow down and worship the Antichrist. And upon doing so, there is this, this curse that, you, that, that, that mm -hmm. comes on you, and it's an irreversible curse. Wow. Um, Irreversible curse. So what if we're, st are we still here then? Well, I mean, if we're still here and we believers. have, as believers, if we have not taken that mark, then we're not cursed. Mm -hmm. And there will be believers. The, the church, so to speak, as they say, goes underground at this point, because remember the church, Christians, believers will be raptured into the air to go back to be with the Lord. But the gospel will be turned over to 144,000 Jews. And at their hand, as they accept Christ, and they look upon him whom they pierced at the uh -huh. cross. They will have a, an awakening to know that this is the Messiah that we've been waiting mm -hmm. for all the time. They will accept Christ. And through these 144,000 Jews, both Jews and Gentiles will be coming to Christ. But as I said, it will be a terrible time mm -hmm. because of the fact that um, in that time uh, there will be great persecution. One more thing I want to mm -hmm. add about persecution before you get off that subject, and I meant to bring the brochure up here to, no, to talk right. about it, but uh, my bishop is part of an international organization, mm -hmm. Bishop Keith Butler of uh, Detroit, Michigan. Part of an, uh, he's on the board of an organization that is promoting information on the fact that Christians in various parts of the world are being persecuted, and Absolutely. there's very little media mm -hmm. coverage about right. it, very little. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the brochure even has the statistics about, and it would, it would just, it would make you. Yeah. And we've, we've got to pray very for those disturbing. We do, yes. because in certain corners of the world, you just can't, you just can't talk about the name of Christ. I remember yeah. in going to China a few years back, sitting across the aisle in the, in the plane from a guy who was smuggling Bibles into China. Mm -hmm. He had them on the plane, but he had them in these boxes mm -hmm. and the like. And, and in some places of the world, Bob, People will take, if they, they're desperate, they'll take one page out of the Bible yeah. and fold it up and put it in their wallet just to have just a to piece have of it. the Word yeah. of God. Yeah. Yeah. That's what well, we we're going to take a break right now, but when I come back, I want to talk about the United States and Israel and prophecy and, and how all those things fit together. Because it, it can get overwhelming it for sure people, can. but at the same time, we've got to bring it down to where we can really understand it you know, for ourselves Absolutely. and grab hold of it. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Okay.
We're back with Bill Harris. We've been talking about the end times, which is kind of scary for a lot of people, especially if they're not really into the Word of God. Yeah. You're talking about the rapture, the, the, the pulling away mm -hmm. of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, people have been saying a lot of this stuff for years and years and years. You heard these predictions of we're in the end times, but now technologically in some of those ways, we, and we know, for fit, you know, actually chronologically, we are closer. Yeah. You think we're kind of coming into that fairly quickly now that the, the times are speeding up? Well, Holy Scripture supports that, mm -hmm. that we are getting close. You, you may recall in the Old Testament times when, when the children of Israel disobeyed God, he said he would scatter them mm -hmm. and then he would bring them back together again. Well, when the northern and the southern kingdoms of Israel were separated, well, yeah. uh, the Assyrians came in in the year 722 B.C. and they, of course, uh, um, invaded the northern mm -hmm. kingdom and then the Babylonians came in in the year 586 BC and they invaded the yeah. southern kingdom for many years. Took they were in slavery. And ex that. Ex yeah, they were in exile and the like. And then um, we see that there's scripture in Ezekiel where he sees this valley of dry bones and yeah. he sees these bones coming back together again. And long short of it is God saying, this is the whole house of Israel, Israel. coming back together yeah. again. Now, come up to modern day, uh, in May 1948. of 1948, 48. May 14th yes. to be exact, marked. Yep. this is when the United Nations turned over the land that was then called Palestine to the Jews. They renamed it Israel. Israel. They are here. I was privileged just this yeah. past May for the 70th anniversary of Israel in our community in Toledo. I sat with the rabbi on the podium as a part of that celebration. Wow. Can you believe that? I'm a Gentile yeah. and I'm up there with the Jewish rabbi. You, you know what amazes me, just as a side note, is that in 1948, the United Nations creates Israel in Palestine, mm -hmm. and now everybody in the world is trying to split that back up yeah, again. Yeah. But it's not happening. It is, it is the force of the enemy, Bob, because if one thing the devil knows, he has heard the prophecy that mm -hmm. God made to ancient Abraham, that I will bless those who bless thee and curse him, the curse of thee, and in thee, in the Jews, shall all nations of the earth be blessed. That in the Old Testament, Genesis chapter 12, verses one through three. three. And so he does not want the things that the Jews have contributed to really be come into fruition and for this world to be blessed. If you were to run reference, I can't tell you all the things, but if you'd run reference on all the contributions of the Jews to the world, it'd be marvelous, right. even on down to how to fight, uh, to identify and fight the, the disease called syphilis. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's just utterly amazing. And so with that prophecy now that, that God has blessed them and they're here in the state of Israel, their very existence over there. I was just in Israel mm -hmm. for my third trip uh, this past October. And now you see that their very existence portrays the fact that we're getting closer. Now, how, do, how does, how does uh, Israel fit into the, the prophecy when we talk about the rapture? The church comes out, mm -hmm. those are Christians. Mm -hmm. Jews could be left behind, yeah. so the, yeah. we got the rapture, we got the end times, we got the mark of the beast, we've yes. got all of these things happening. How does the nation of Israel fit into all that? It, it reaches a point in time where, where the devil is so intent on destroying Israel. Even now, Israel is mm -hmm. surrounded by hostile enemies. Right. When you look on the map, you see enemies all around. Lebanon to the north, Syria to the northeast, you've got Jordan to the east, then you've got uh, uh, the, the southern part, which is, uh, you've Egypt. got we've got Saudi Arabia, you've got yep. Egypt, and, and, and then they all want to push Israel into the sea, sea, the Mediterranean Sea. So it's going to reach a point where the nations of the world will get sick and tired of Israel, and they will, they will just converge upon mm -hmm. Israel to destroy her. If you watch votes in the United Nations, you will see that the United Nations is like a, a psychological barometer of the mood of the world against Israel, Israel in the yeah. way it votes. And so the United States is just about the only friend that, that, uh, that Israel has. In my first trip to Israel in 79, as, uh, as a media person, we had an hour and a half long meeting with Menachem Begin. And he at that time was expressing great concern because of the way that the, uh, the United States might back away from its support mm -hmm. of Israel because of the oil embargo and the like. And I said, but no, Mr. Prime Minister, you will recall that God said, I will bless them and who bless thee and curse him that curseth yeah. thee. I said, the United States is blessed in part because of its stand with Israel. When I made that comment, this is in a secular setting, tears started coming down the Prime Minister's face. And I reached wow. out to shake his hand and instead he embraced uh -huh. me. The word of God actually blessed the Prime <laughs> Minister of Israel right Praise there in that God. setting. That's yeah. a great story. Oh, it's a but great story. But now, th as they converge mm -hmm. upon, to answer your question, as they converge upon the world, the nations converge upon Israel, mm -hmm. that is, 
to destroy her. This is what brings the Lord back so that he actually sets foot on earth because when he comes back, the sword in his mouth, which is his word, begins to destroy the enemies that seek to destroy Israel. And God allows his son to come back and set up his millennial reign it, on this yeah. earth. What's amazing is that we, we have the technology now that every eye can yes. see instantaneously. Yes. We can see what's happening in Israel. You know, one part of the scripture, Bob, talks about these two um, prophets that come down to prophesy to the nation of Israel killed, yeah. and how they are killed and their bodies mm -hmm. are lo laying there in the streets of Jerusalem for all to see all around the world. Well, how can the rest of the world see that? Mm -hmm. Satellite TV, right. Internet, right. those kinds of things. The technology right. is huge. Here, now, you're right. <clears throat> what goes through your spirit when you see the United States backing away from Israel? We have, we have a lot of calls yeah. in our Congress mm -hmm. to back mm -hmm. away from yes, Israel. We uh, we've had calls even from the White House at times, we've got to back away from Israel. What, what, you think it's even possible that we could as, as the United States it, to back totally away? It's Will possible. We? It's possible. Um, and, and, and it talks about, the Bible talks about all of the nations eventually will back, uh, seek to destroy mm -hmm. Israel. But I think it's a precursor. It's a prelude to what eventually will happen. Yeah. And again, remember, there is the force of the devil that works against Israel. And even Revelation talks about this with the, the woman that's bearing the child and how that, that Satan tries to destroy that child and, and get at the woman. A part of this r relates to Israel. The devil wants to destroy Israel because sure. it, it, is, it is God's people that he uses to bless the entire world. And it's not that God puts Israel or Jews on a pedestal and that they are above everybody else. When God had no people that he could turn to at a certain people, at a certain time, he created a people. Yeah. You know, he got, he, he got <laughs> Abraham, who was just a Bedouin moon worshiper in the <laughs> desert, and, and he yeah. called him and, and, and he used and waited till he got By real faith, old. He followed him. Yes, he followed him and waited until he got real old. He says, I'm going to give you a son and I'm going to give you children. And then he, he was, about, I think, about 75 years old at that time. He let, he let him get a hundred years old before he fulfilled that yeah. prophecy. His you know? wife is laughing at him yes. <laughs> all the time. Yes. But, and now, here's the ironic thing about it. There, when, when you recall, Abraham's son, uh, wife, rather, Sarah, mm -hmm. thought that the, the promise would never come of a son. So she said, I've got an idea. Why don't you uh, go into my handmaiden's tent yeah. and there impregnate her, and she will bring us a son, and we can... We can have a son. We're going to fulfill God's. Yeah, we're going to do it we're on our do own. It ourselves. Yeah, yeah, we're going to do it on our own. Yeah. Well, that wasn't God's way because later, a year or so later, God did touch her womb and she brought forth the son, Isaac. Now, these two boys could never Ishmael get along. And, yeah. yeah, Ishmael you know, and, and Isaac. And Ishmael, with his mom, went back to Egypt, became the founder yeah, of the, the Arab, Arab world as we know sure. it today. And uh, Isaac, of course, through Jacob and the other part of the lineage um, up until today, right. became the Jews as we know them today. And what you have now in the Middle East conflict is two half-brothers yeah, who, yeah. uh, mm -hmm, who cannot get along yeah. together. Yeah, I don't think and people realize only that. Je yeah, Jesus is mm -hmm. the only one who will bring peace in the Middle East. Right. Shuttle right. diplomacy won't get it. Nothing that we can do in Congress or the UN will do it. But Jesus will Christ. do it. Uh, just a, a point again for those people who really uh, kind of the, the tribulation really upsets them. Mm -hmm. Where are, I, I, what, what do you believe? Where are we in, in, in that whole thing? Does the Bible really support that uh, uh, we're going to be taken out in the rapture before the before, tribulation, yeah. during the tribulation, after the tribulation, throughout the tribulation? All those beliefs <laughs> flourish, Bob. They do. In my seminar, I do not take a stand. I'm not, I'm not dogmatic about any mm -hmm. of it. Uh, I tell people there's, there, there's, here, here are supportive scriptures for each one of those beliefs. The Bible is not quite definitive, mm -hmm. extremely definitive on that. And so we can't be, we just can't push our own beliefs on that. The thing to do is accept Christ and be ready right. so that whenever he comes, mm -hmm. boom, there you go, there you go with him. Yeah, because if we, if we knew that timing, people would wait until they yeah. saw that timing coming. Sit down across their legs uh, and just wait for the time to come. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you've answered a lot of questions for our audience. Bill, thank you for being here today. We really appreciate Great it. Great to be with you. After the break. So we have to change our philosophies and our beliefs about success and failure. Failure is just, listen, success never happens without failure. Divine Strategies for Success. It's Biblical Principles for Success in Life. Pastor Rob Yannick, 
wrote this book, released it. When was this book written? 2003. And now you've got one coming out that sounds like kind of the reverse. What happens when you don't see that success? What happens when all of a sudden success is fleeting and it's gone or you, you, you tried it, you knocked down, I quit? Well, I, I, I realized in stories that I've read and, and you know, have heard about, mm. um, there's always been failures on the road to success and i found out that everybody gets knocked down so this the new book it's is not about, instant it's not instant <laughs> no and the new book is about what to do how to get up when life knocks mm -hmm. you down because life knocks you down whether in business finances or in your relationships and what do you do so that's what the book is about and in the first chapter i talk about everybody falls yeah. everybody gets knocked down that's so easy when we do get knocked down I mean you, especially when you, you've tried and you've tried hard and it's not your fault that success didn't didn't come I mean you, you, you've, you've tried you've, you've done these things and there's no success and so it's just easy to say I'll go on with my life someplace else I mean I'll, I'll just try something else why do I need to get back up well that's where we need tenacity and courage and perseverance and faith mm -hmm. to, to, to realize, okay, I have failed. Maybe my business failed. Maybe I have a failed marriage, but that doesn't mean I'm a failure. What if it's not my fault? Oh, it, it, it's, it's not. It, <laughs> a lot of times failure is, failure comes to us a couple different ways. One, people make decisions and it causes us to fail. Mm -hmm. Two, I make dumb decisions <laughs> and I fail. You know, maybe I didn't lead the business right, or maybe um, I didn't treat my wife right. You know, but so it's it's twofold. Mm -hmm. It's not always our fault, and sometimes it is our fault. But even if it is our fault, Bob, we still can recover. We still can bounce back. Just because we strike out doesn't mean we're not going to get another bat. So where do you get that inside of you to say, okay, I'm it's, it's I'm at the nine count. I either got to get up or roll over and play dead. Where, what comes up inside of you? What, where do you get that energy, that, that stamina to, to get back up and maybe take another shot in the jaw? From the past training and faith and, the, and uh, realizing I have trained for this. So yes, if you start a business and it fails, uh, that doesn't mean the business is over. It's like Thomas Edison, yeah. you know, 10,000 ways the light bulb didn't work. Mm -hmm. He figured out these are 10,000 ways it didn't no. work. He didn't look at his failure. Right. He looked at it as progress. progress. Mm -hmm. So we have to change our philosophies and our beliefs about success and failure. Failure is just, listen, success never happens without failure. See, that's, that, that's, that's a good point. You, you don't even know what success is until you failed a couple of times and say, I'm, I, I don't want to do this again. Exactly. Well, think about in the area of sports. A team wins and a team loses, but the following year, it could be switched. Mm -hmm. You know, that doesn't make who you are. Just because I always tell people failure is an event. Mistakes are an event. It's just something that happens. But God can turn those around and really give you miracles, mm -hmm. really give you um, extraordinary success. And, and here's the key. If you learn from them. That's a major, major, major thing. If, if I can I, look if at I my can failure. Say, I'm, I'm not going to do this again. Yeah. If I can look at my failure or my mistake and say, huh, I'm going to learn from that, then you didn't fail. It taught you something. Right. It educated you. It's just the classroom of life. Mm -hmm. Now, what if the failure does involve somebody else? Whether it involves, I mean, you failed, and in that failure, you've damaged a relationship, whether it's your wife or your children or a business partner. How do you reconcile that? How do you, how do you go back and say, okay, I, I, I want to start this again yeah. when they've been hurt and they may not want to get, be part of your success? Your you success. have to admit, I blew it. You have to say, you have to say mm -hmm. I, it's my fault or this will happen. I'm sorry this happened. And you've got to repent. And there, there needs to be forgiveness. Sometimes it takes a while, right. but I think the person being honest and admitting the mistake is the first step to healing. You know, I've deal with people all the time who have made grave moral failures. I, I've dealt with businessmen who's they've made wrong decisions and their businesses had failed. And I have coached these guys because some of them wallow 
in in guilt and condemnation for that failure and you know because the state of people's salaries and benefits are online you know sure. toys r us just yeah. shut down twenty eight thousand people without a job you know and um there's probably some conviction in that of some of those leaders, sure. especially when they got uh, the private equity firms gave them um, eight million dollars, mm -hmm. you know, as a little parachute. They, they shut it down. Yeah. Yeah. Shut, yeah. Um, but uh, I think we have to forgive ourselves and we have to learn from it and not and try not to go back and do the same thing that we did. Right. The new book, where can they get it? They'll be able to get it on uh, Amazon and mm -hmm. they'll be able to get it on robyanock.com. Thanks again, Rob. I appreciate you being here. My pleasure, Bob.